three minute and 51 second video I'm going to show you because TED folks are pretty specific about their timings. <laughs> so I'm going to take you through this video and I'm going to talk you through it because I think what you have to figure out is we have to make something that can penetrate a cell and insert a piece of DNA. So first we got to make it. What you see here is the cellular manufacturing plant called 293T cells, for those of you who care. What they do, and they're really good at, is making things. Those little things you see slipping around, those are four plasmids. Those are four parts to the virus we're trying to make. You put them in there in parts, and the cell understands what to do inside the nucleus. It reads them, as you can see here. It produces four pieces of RNA. Three of them bug out of the nucleus, go out there and produce the three components we need. Capsid, a red protein, and the VSVG envelope. Again, forget all those fancy words, but those are the parts. Then, here's the key piece. That therapeutic piece of RNA, that's what encodes for that broken gene that's in the blood stem cell in the case of ALD. Here you see it packaged, and boom, right there. That's your virus. That's our Trojan horse. That's the thing. It's actually an HIV-derived virus that now has been hacked up and is produced, and now millions of those are sitting in this vial. Cool, but not that helpful unless you have the other half, which is you need the blood stem cell from the patient, from Ethan. And here what you're visualizing is you're going into the blood band, uh, sorry, you're going into the, um, the marrow to pick out the blood stem cells. And you see these little red guys popping into the bloodstream? Those are the ones we capture. It's a fairly standard procedure. We stick billions of those, or as many as we can, into a bag. Now, next step, virus meets blood stem cell in the bag outside the body. So virus never goes in the body. What it then knows to do is to infect the cells. Infect it as many times as we can, as many as cells as we can in that bag. It goes into the first the cytoplasm, then it releases the payload. It then knows to, and we're certainly taking some scientific liberties here to make it a little more simple, but it explodes there, right there. That's your money ship, the RNA. But for those of you who remember your biology class, we got to do some gymnastics to make sure that turns into DNA. Because we have here, up here, it says revolutionary ideas. Well, watch carefully here, because as we finish this gymnastics, you're going to visualize the revolutionary idea. This gets moved and transported into the blood stem cells compartment, the nucleus, where the DNA exists. And right here, in a little magic, boom, it integrates itself into the DNA. Now what you've just created is a gene-modified blood stem cell. That stem cell knows what to do. The cells know what to do. It starts producing your therapeutic gene. It starts producing a lot of them. You turn your red cell into blue cell in this picture here. Bottom line, those are modified. Those now know how to do what the problem was before. We put it back into the patient. So picture Ethan here. We put it back in. Now these cells seed your marrow, and they then start to produce daughter cells. All those daughter cells now know what to do. They have a functioning copy of this gene. That's great. How does it compare to, to ALD? ALD, as you remember, in the brain had this buildup of white matter, or, white, or demyelinization, these very long-chain fatty acids. So what happens now is some percent of these blood stem cells, as they continue to produce, turn into macrophages. That's this pretty cell. Once that cell moves, some percentage of those cross the blood-brain barrier. This is all pretty you know, seismic in science, if you ask me. And it moves into the brain. It then sits there and acts like a sponge on these very long-chain fatty acids. And what happens is stabilizes the disease in not all the cases, but we certainly hope in many of the cases, depending on where the disease is. And you say, Nick, great, great video, wonderful. Who cares? It's a video. What you should care about is an awesome pair over in France, Patrico Borg and Natalie Cartier, did exactly what I just described. What you see on the left-hand side is an untreated patient. We went through that. What you see on the right is two patients that were treated over five-plus years ago. You don't have to look at a lot of scans or be a radiologist to realize that those two kids are doing pretty well. They're in the playground, they're at home, they're in school. Pretty amazing. What's also really cool, now let's zoom out a little bit and say, how does this apply somewhere else? Well, let me tell you about another disease very quickly. It's called thalassemia. This is a case where you can't make hemoglobin. If you don't get hemoglobin from someone else, you die average age of seven. If you do get it from someone else, you can survive to the age of 30, 40 years old, perhaps, with a very tough quality of life. 
So what we do there is, instead of inserting the transporter gene, we insert the hemoglobin gene. So this funky slide that you have up here is the blood le 